everybody and welcome to a rather unique game. Today we are going to be playing I Love You, Colonel Sanders, a finger licking good dating simulator. I have not played this game at all. I have no idea what to expect, but um, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> we got fried chicken and biscuits right off the start, so what's not to love, honestly? Great, delicious stuff. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in the moment forever. Or you could wake up. No! 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 Your first day at culinary school is a no- It's no time to sleep in! Smack that clock up and at him, or throw the clock out the window. Hey, we're gonna get up and at them. We're gonna learn how to cook today. <laughs> Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Wow, that's a thought out name. <laughs> Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by, and you find your imagination getting away from you. You take the seriously or daydream. Hey, this is this is cooking. This is serious business. I'd better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. You burst, bust through your morning checklist. Teeth brushed, hair combed, pits deodorized. Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off to class. Okay, so am I grabbing just like some cold, crummy, dry biscuit? that I've had sitting in my room? Or do I just have like a magic biscuit maker in my room? I need to know this. Where are the, I need context clues game. <laughs> just what you needed to get your blood flowing. Okay, I apparently have a magic biscuit maker because that is a fluffy, warm, steaming biscuit and it was in my room. Okay. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School like Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam! She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Coravel! Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I sure am! Excited and a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. What the... It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Classic Miriam. Raised by master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quick sandbox, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. Oh, at the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. What the? Can I go to school, please? <laughs> Sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss, she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Oof, that's not, that's not great. Should you prep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? I mean, gossip usually just causes drama, so let's give her a pep talk. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had her tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me night- Oh, the lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget! Ooh, not a good thing to bring up then. <clears throat> I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet, and she told you you were destined for great things. Remember the card with the fancy looking tower, and that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. In no time we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. <laughs> they are pretty cool bangs. Can you believe I cut them myself? Yes, Miriam. Yes, I can. <laughs> you can definitely believe it. 
I, uh, I cannot believe it. Aw, oh, Cora's such a good friend. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and in custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley. Oh, God. You know when their name has that many extra letters, there's some shit going on. It's Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. <clears throat> Hi, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave Coralville's shins alone! They are perfectly normal shins! Ugh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact it's that it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. God, I love this game. It feels me. <laughs> if anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. I mean, I'm sorry, but this is totally, um... Totally one of the thirst traps of the game. I'm sorry. She has thigh highs with the punch on top in a boob hole. <laughs> Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man, has stopped looking at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight that you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. What the? <laughs> Van Van! You ring ring. You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe that University of Cooking School Academy for Learning would even allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now. Or maybe hire us on as professors. You amateurs could learn a lot from us. I feel like I'm in JoJo now. Like, have you just... Uh... With the first day of school about to start, there's no... There's just not time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. See you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Oh, Oh, nice. Oopsie. I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I'm named after my Pop Pop. He's old. This, this kid is adorable. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Hi, Pop. I'm Corval, so... Are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope! And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. A scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium in front of the class. Adorable. Oh, I love dogs. It's so cute. It has lots of... Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup, and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still just demand respect. Woof. <laughs> what? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever! I guess only a dog no dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining, though. <clears throat> Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you as a swirl of cherry blossom petals fills the air inside of the classroom. I'm chilly! Someone close the window! And then, he walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. 
Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Tom stands still. <laughs> if it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders. I'm not cringing at all right now. I'm not cringing at all. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your bow brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And this over here must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. No one talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is wrong with all of your really weird insults? Besides, when Corval sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Yeah, thanks for bringing attention to the sweat. Uh, yeah, we'll clean ourselves up. It's a good thing you didn't think about forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. <sighs> Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. <coughs> Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny foods. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and complete and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss- QUIET! Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue, you're the on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? <laughs> Don't you recognize me? It's my third year in the school with you as my teacher. <laughs> everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I- You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students. That tardiness is unacceptable! <laughs> Even Clank made it here on time, running- rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. He turned to see the student Sprinkles is re referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. It's so cute. The class burst into laughter. Oh, clanky rascal. <clears throat> Sprinkles walks into the classroom as everybody stands in obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose in the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. <clears throat> You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkles' reputation for being smart, but tough, is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Uh, chicken snack, cause Colonel Sanders dating him. uh, a chicken. <clears throat> Reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkles' eyes go wide as he locks onto it. Um, his favorite! Well, 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 I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The furry professor immediately devours the sack, leaving snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eye you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they want to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everybody rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're stand left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Corvo, there's a seat here! It seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me, if you're interested. Okay, <clears throat> so 
this is my best friend. I see them like all day, every day. Meanwhile, this hot piece of man meat is offering me to sit next to him. I'm, I'm sorry, bestie. I will hang out with you after school. <coughs> you may have to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks, thanks for offering me the seat. I've only had two rules. Do all you can, and do it the best you can. It's the only way you'll ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Literally has a tear in his eye. I love it. <laughs> That's so inspiring. A little off topic, if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into the, your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz! Yay, a quiz about me! This is incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz. Well, tell me if you're all ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question number one. <clears throat> if train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely. Looking at you, Pop. That's right! Forest is to tree as chicken is to... What? So, a forest has tree, a chicken has feathers. That's right! What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? Well, we're going with the one he mentioned, a spork. That's right! What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt, camel meat, or a pancake that looks like a silly face. I'm gonna go with anything so long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. That's right! It sprinkles a good boy. He's a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy! <laughs> That's right! Perfect score! Five out of five! Let's go, boys! <laughs> well, be honest, did you cheat? You look up to see that Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. Oh, we love it! I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Oh, nice! He's hitting on my brain. I love it. <laughs> Hot diggity, Corval! You just scored some major Colonel Sanders point with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. You smell that? It must be lunch! It smells crazy good! Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? Oh, him. No, I just want to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone, cheers! <clears throat> Shh! She said, shush. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. <laughs> Indeed, that smell. You hold your breaths, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept! Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, Stop thinking and start eating! For years I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What? You think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw! Sure. No, my dude! No! I just, uh, drafting my last will and testament in case, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. Got him! 
He looks around nervously to see if anybody else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body cha language change from bitter to and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that, it's, realizes that he's destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. She wants him all to herself. Oh, you can back off. Uh-uh. Not happening. Oh, please. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any. I'll take his! <laughs> Whoa. Hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing! Tasting Colonel Sanders' food teleports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Focus your mind and meditate on the moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart, or swim towards the light. I want to know more about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart, personally. The flavors in your mouth are so beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with the flavors, you feel something that can be only be described as love. For a man? For a flavor? Are they the same? After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. I approach the Colonel. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I was wondering if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <laughs> the face chain. Oh, ha, ha. how bold of you to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me a, for my fortune and establish my legacy for, an, for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. <laughs> It's just you and me talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole, <laughs> two more whole days to get to know each other. <laughs> He's clearly not going to give up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. What is this face? He looks disgusted at me. I'm so upset right now. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? You've got Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both way to ways to make sure you're truly alone, then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient. But you can't tell. I use redacted. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Redacted? Wow, you'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. <laughs> While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave a mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show his pers your personality to him. Neg him to show him your own strength, wow him with the big idea to add an additional ingredient, or be modest but thoughtful. He likes my brain, so let's be modest but thoughtful. <clears throat> well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. Yes! Colonel Sanders, I will woo you! <laughs> the flavors were complex comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery. It was perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Corvo. <laughs> he said my name. I'm sure you'll be a, a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. 
We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. You step into the massive cooking arena, where the afternoon lessons will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they can need. Look at this place, it's magnificent! Finally we get to show our stuff! Wait a second! Oh no! We have to show our stuff! What if I totally blow it? You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. She makes that Yeah. <laughs> Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Natural Miri Naturally, Miriam looks over to you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Okay, we're getting a, a bit eager there. <laughs> hey, Colonel. Hey, Colonel. Would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is. Me and you, if that wasn't clear. <laughs> Want to be my partner? Sure, Corvo. I'll prepare our station. I'm so sorry, Betsy. <laughs> Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. Beep. Boop. Boop. Oh my! Food has the part. So sorry, who to choose? It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Jane, can you stop making me relate with you? <laughs> who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? I'm sorry, but Clank is adorable, and Pop is a child. I at uh, Pop doesn't even know their own name. Clank, you're the guy. Sorry, Pop, but I think Marion will be partnering with Clank today. Oh, he's so happy! It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of school even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. He's so cute! <laughs> Tissue, I hardly know you. <laughs> Clank judders, and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Aww! Miriam X Clank, I love it, I ship it! <laughs> Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make fire. You get the idea. It doesn't take two flints. It takes flint and steel. Flints don't make sparks. They have to be hit against, like, you know, the steel to make the sparks. Ugh. What dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? <clears throat> Steak tartare seems easy enough, fancy, but you don't need to cook it. Using octopus will blow his mind. Hey, hey, this is Colonel Sanders dating sim. We're trying to seduce the king of chicken. And what, when you think of Colonel Sanders and KFC, you think of chicken. But what's the second thing you look at, think of? Well, maybe third. It's a good fight between biscuits and mashed potatoes and gravy. Well, time to give him his second or third signature recipe. I've always wanted something of- I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes. And gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Just like you without me, Colonel Sanders. <laughs> Colonel Sanders cast a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. It looks like some things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Or just cooking partners, mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off my man. Ashley, you're a bitch. <laughs> Did someone call for me? Ugh, no. Jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Corvel's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That's the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van. 
Are we working in a quartet instead of duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Corvel was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha, <laughs> doubt it. <clears throat> Don't be rude, Van Van! Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I may make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cause complimentary shadow? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. <clears throat> Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. He has for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Senator's hunk of hugs in your time of need, or turn to Miriam, your favorite bestie who always has your back. I mean, we've gotten hearts out of Colonel Sanders three times now. I don't think he's going to let Ashley walk all over me. I'm here to learn and express myself via cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? Oh, that was me, not Colonel. Oops. You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm you're on the same page. I chose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chose me. Isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. I took on Corville as my partner for this activity, and I'll stand by it. <gasps> She's so cute when she cries. I swear, this is the cutest face she's made so far. Normally, she's like super bitch face, but this is actually cute. <laughs> Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Corvel's natural talent or their loyalty. Aww. <clears throat> Being offended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for Sprinkles and hopes he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Damn those cute corgis in their short, short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that, in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfect creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which he pours its smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be proud. Colonel Sanders holds out his fork to you. You reach and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting something against you to beat with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without blinking, Thinking, you fling the spork full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van <gasps> Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravies and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? <clears throat> Hold on right there, Corvo. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you better both be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Can I have potato face? Van Van rushes back over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty braised tentacle of octopus in a sil silky saltwater sauce. Plated on an axe blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Wow. You've ignored me for too long. That is enough. It is I who will have the first bite, and you will all look on it with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van, swipes a bite off his signature dish right off the plate. No! Don't! 
Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rust. It might have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. <clears throat> Too late. It has been eaten. I, uh, think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! <laughs> what the? Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest is gone. You notice the tip of a tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment, then is almost back to his oblivious self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison! He's so cute! And the entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole cloud crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. That's good. <clears throat> I'm not sure if professors here make enough money. Um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here! Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all of his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you... Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Corabel. There's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream, day and night. Never stopping, never resting, also lifting a lot of weights. Like, so many weights. <clears throat> yeah, I can tell. We should follow our dreams with all our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you... Shut up! I'm the one trying to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story! Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? Oh, are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that! I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance you hear a long, sad sigh. <laughs> Forget him, we're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. <laughs> spork monster! The spork monster is here to fight a hero. Van Van. <laughs> what? I uh, think I left the first door open. Later, nerds! <clears throat> How dare you threaten me when I was just letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Fuck. I was so close! Be afraid. Be very afraid of me, because I'm a monster, see? Is he framing a purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, It's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? I'm going to attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love! Cook with love does one damage. It just got real! That attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack! They spit hot gravy at you! You take one damage. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure. You do you. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? On the attack! Which attack will you use? We're gonna cook with love. It does one damage. But Spark Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. They go on the attack once again. They use utility tentacle. You take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not gonna survive the battle. We're gonna attack again. 
with Cook with Love. We deal one damage and Spork Monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's gonna have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Bio villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Pop Pie Power Punch! Pop Pie Power Punch does 10 damage! Spark Monster is defeated! <gasps> My crush saved me! You saved me! An injured Spork Monster spews steam into the night. Forget Mercy, finish him, or spare this wretched beast. Forks are pretty important. We're gonna we're gonna spare the poor boy. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name uh, it, to have it signed out is Borco. Hmm. Borco, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down for the battle buzz, you realize your final attack has left you completely defeated. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is often also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> All the characters riding on chicken. You awake on day two, attempt and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? And then there was that secret ingredient Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the spork monster, she launches into a story of her own. But I think that we are going to probably have to call it right here, guys. We have already been going for about 45 minutes now. So I think that we're going to have to pick up Miriam's story the next time that we play the Colonel Sater Sanders Dating Simulator. So thank you all for coming out. Drop a like and a subscribe down below and let me know if you think that I, Corvel, will be able to win the, the Colonel's heart. Otherwise, you guys have a great rest of your day.